Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name is Nick, and this is our full review of the Salomon S Lab Spectre. So the S-Lab Spectre is a new carbon plate shoe from Salomon that is designed to be a super shoe for the masses, so for people aiming for things like four-hour marathons rather than sub-two-hour marathons. It is not to be confused with the normal Salomon Spectre, which is a training shoe, a cheaper shoe. The S-Lab indicates it's a, you know, a bit more of a souped-up shoe with a much bigger price tag, and it sits in the range along with the S-Lab Phantasm 2, which is their full carbon plate racing shoe, maybe for people who are aiming for sub-two marathons. It's expensive, it's £210 in the UK or $220 in the US. Weighs in at 254 grams or nine ounces in my UK size nine. It's got a 38 millimeter stack height at the heel and 30 at the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. So you've got a dual density midsole here with a top layer of Salomon's Piba based foam, their best foam, which is the Energy Foam Plus. And then the bottom layer is Energy Foam, which is a blend of EVA and or Leffin materials. It's a bit firmer, a bit more stable, and you've got that bouncier, lighter top layer. You've got Salomon's R Camber Rocker on the shoe that starts a bit further back in the shoe to aid those who land a bit further back in rolling onto their forefoot. And you've got an energy blade carbon plate running through the midsole. It's winged at the back to create a bit more stability. It's also got quite a wide base at the back of the shoe here. It's really quite wide at the heel. And you've got sidewalls of foam there, all to create stability at the back of the shoe. Where Salomon presumes those slower runners are landing, they're getting st a stable landing and then getting rocked through onto their forefoot. Upper is quite a padded one for a super shoe, especially with lots of support and padding around the Achilles and the tongue. The collar goes quite high at the back of the shoe there, which I'm a huge fan of but you haven't actually got much of an internal heel counter on the shoe with the wide base and the sidewalls of foam adding the stability at the heel instead. You've got a contagrip rubber outsole with pretty good coverage and all the stuff that's going to come into contact with the ground. You've also got a cutout there, quite a narrow pinch point in the middle of the shoe there where they've got cutouts almost on either side of the foam, but two strips of rubber at the back, lots of coverage on the forefoot, so it should be okay for durability and grip. So the fit for me in the S-Lab Spectre, I'm a size 8 in the UK, this is a size 8. I found it to be a very comfortable shoe. There's plenty of space in the forefoot, around the side of the foot. Um, it, there's definitely a lot of wiggle room in it, which you sometimes don't find when you're buying um, calm plate race shoes. Uh, so for me, it felt very comfortable. I definitely stayed in my size in the shoe. I also didn't have a problem with this extended heel section either. I found found it was nicely padded and I would stick to my size in the shoe. Comes the fit of the shoe, it was all good for me in my normal running shoe size. This is a UK 9, which is a US 9.5. That tends to be the UK 9 I prefer because brands either convert to a US 10 or a US 9.5. 9.5 is good because I'm a small UK 9. Yeah, really good fit throughout the shoe. Nice hold around the heel and midfoot. Don't love this tab at the heel though. I did irritate my Achilles a little bit on longer runs. It's something if I bought the shoe and I was going to use it constantly, I might be tempted just to cut off to avoid that Achilles irritation. I don't really know what the point of that is there, but otherwise all good on the fit. No problems at all in my normal size. So I've done about 60K in this shoe and that has varied between a couple of easy runs, a couple of interval sessions and a longer session, which I did uh, up to 20K. Um, and what I've found about the shoe is that it ticks a lot of boxes, um, but it doesn't really excel in any area. What I've, what I've um, experienced from those runs that I've done in it, on the interval sessions, I would be running intervals uh, up to three minutes and that would be at my target 5K pace, which is about three minute 45 per kilometer. Uh, and I found that it was fine at that. It could do those paces comfortably. It has a nice rolling motion. It's definitely not counterproductive to running at those faster paces, but it also didn't feel like it was really helping me when I was trying to get to those faster paces either. It didn't feel like there wasn't especially any bounce in the shoe or any uh, really smooth transition for, for running faster. It just felt like a completely solid, uh, comfortable shoe that could pick up the pace if you wanted it to. Um, on the slower runs, I didn't really enjoy it as much. It just it feels a little bit firm for me. It just feels a little bit like it's not really offering me anything in terms of that comfort or the softness that I like to get from my midsoles. Um, so I definitely wouldn't say it's a shoe that's designed for those slower paces, which for me would be about five minute 20 uh, kilometers. Um, the longer run that I did in it, which was that 20k run, uh, it felt absolutely fine. I was running at marathon pace for most of that and it felt like I could keep up the pace nicely. I didn't have any issues with it. But as I say, it just doesn't feel like it's really doing a lot 
to help you out either. And when you're paying this much for a shoe, you probably do want it to feel like it's doing something and giving you a little bit more uh, energy return or, or, or transition or something that really justifies the price tag. Um, but I didn't have any problems with it. I just didn't really find anything that where it excelled and I thought this shoe is really doing a good job at this. Apart from stability. Now we've talked about this a few times on the channel where super shoes uh, or calm plate race shoes are often don't have stability options. So uh, if you are a runner that really wants stability, it's quite hard to find a shoe in the uh, super shoe world that offers a good level of stability. But I think this shoe does actually have a nice level of stability in it compared to a lot of shoes like the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, things like that. So definitely a lot sturdier, definitely feels like your foot's firmly in place. Um, and I think that's probably where this shoe excels a bit. And when it's the marketing is talking about it being a super shoe designed for those people looking for a four hour marathon time. I think the main focus of that is really that stability element. So you're, you're getting stability in the shoe and you're getting a lot of the technology that you would associate with those uh, super shoes. But um, I, I've definitely found that when it comes to stability, it feels very nice in the shoe and not to the detriment of being able to run a bit faster. So it's probably a nice option for that. But other than that, um, I really just found it to be a very um, comfortable, sort of daily, faster running shoe uh, that I would put in with the realms of things like the um, Socony and Dolphin Speed Series. Um, not as good as that for daily training miles and versatility, but it's the same sort of shoe for me and it delivers those same sorts of benefits. So I've run 30 miles in the Salomon Slab Spectre and I've been using it at a range of speeds. It's a little bit of a tricky one to test me. So I am not the target runner for this group. I'm a little bit quicker than that. My marathon PB is 228, but I have run lots of different paces in the shoe to see how it feels at those different paces to see if it feels best at a certain pace or what I've really found is it feels better when you're running faster, no matter what your pace is. It's, you know, it is still a shoe that is designed for speed Speed. It's just not quite as aggressive and wobbly and all out as full super shoes. Should say right at the top here, I don't really believe that people run in different ways at different speeds. If you think if you look at any group of runners in any race, you'll see you know quite a wide range of running styles. But there is something to be said potentially for a more stable super shoe because obviously most of the ones on the market are quite wobbly, lightweight, and not really built for stability. And this is certainly built for stability. It's got a slightly firmer ride than I expected. It's not harsh by any means, but you don't really have a feeling of sinking into that top layer of peeper foam. You actually just get quite a firm feeling throughout, which is obviously created by the firmer layer of foam underneath and then the carbon plate in the shoe like i said it's not a harsh feeling it's not like it's going to be uncomfortable but you're not getting that sink in and squish and then bouncy response that you get from you know full peeba midsoles it's just it's a little bit more muted than that especially landing at the heel like i do you get that stable feeling certainly of landing on a big wedge of foam at the back there but you're not really getting that super shoe feeling i'd say so like i said it is very built up at the heel and it almost feels too safe for me it's a big firm landing zone you know that is good for terms of stability, but it, you know it's not what you expect from a super shoe. It almost feels much more like a training shoe to me as a result of that. like You do get a decent rocker onto your toes. It's quite fluid, but it's not very aggressive. And actually, when you do roll through onto your toes, it's not like you're then hitting a very big wedge of soft and springy foam there either. You move through, you get rolled off, but you're not at any point really getting that propulsive, bouncy feeling that you do get from the best super shoes. So like I said, I've used it as a range of paces, you know, going down to around my marathon pace of 3.30 per kilometer. And I think it feels better when you are running at faster speed. So I think this is true of runners in general, which is why I always say in reviews, like it feels good at easy paces or fast paces. Don't really mean my easy paces or my fast paces. I mean, in general, runners, when they're moving at speed, do change their gait a little bit. They get a bit more purposeful. They run with a bit more intent. And I think that's when the shoe starts to feel a bit better. When I was mooching around at easy paces, you know, it still felt fine. I do think this is a versatile shoe that will do those kind of runs all right because you get rock through quite well and it is very stable but it doesn't really feel great like i prefer a less stiff kind of more cushioned shoe more flexible shoe for those kind of easy runs but it is quite versatile on that front but yeah i think it does feel better when you start running at pace or whatever that pace is for you it rolls through a bit more smoothly and it feels better underfoot it just doesn't feel as good as a super shoe or indeed even the best super trainers for me like i think it's just a bit bulky and heavy and just doesn't really feel very light and nimble and aggressive on the foot it doesn't feel like a shoe that when you pull it on okay i'm gonna go and run fast it feels like a solid training shoe rather than a super shoe for any kind of runner i'd say. Okay.
verdict on the S-Lab Spectre, I'd say at the top here, I don't really agree with the premise of the shoe. I don't think that people running at a certain speed need a different shoe necessarily to those running at a fast speed. I think it really comes down to individuals running gait, how stable they like their shoes and what they really look for in a shoe. Like I run very differently to loads of runners around me at my pace. I'm sure people at the four hour mark will notice very different running styles there. And the idea that there's a one size fits all shoe for them, I think doesn't really work. I do think there is something in the idea of a more stable super shoe though. And you know, that can be a good option for people who just don't get on with things like the Vaporfly, Alphafly, very soft springy shoes that, you know, they find too unstable and don't really work for them in races. In general, when we've talked about stabilities and super shoes, I think there's always been a scale almost. Like the more stable the shoe, the less super it is. And this is an indication of that because it's pretty stable, works almost as a versatile daily trainer. It just doesn't feel like a super shoe to me. It hasn't got that repulsive feeling. It doesn't really give you that efficiency benefit that makes you feel like you're running faster while expending less energy, which is what you get from the best super shoes. That's a problem because it is priced like a super shoe. Like it's not as expensive as Salomon's Phantasm 2 or some of the other super shoes on the market, but it's pretty close. It's over 200 quid and that's just too much. I think for what you're getting here from this shoe I do think actually if you're looking on the stability super spectrum you can find better options that are a bit more stable things like the endorphin speed 4 and the endorphin pro 4 even actually they're both reasonably stable shoes with plates that feel faster to me if I go out and do a race or a hard session than the S-Lab Spectre it's even the Brooks up here in Elite 4 which it does suffer from the stability uh, super spectrum thing I've been talking about in that it's not as super as other super shoes but it's got a firmer foam underfoot and as a result I think it is a bit more stable than many super shoes out there or being lighter and a fair bit faster than the um, S-Lab Spectre for me. So it's a, it's a slightly tricky one to give a definitive verdict on because, like I said, I'm not necessarily the target runner. Maybe it will really work amazingly well, but I think trying to convince people of that is a very hard job for Salomon. And what you have here is a shoe that when you pull it on, it doesn't really feel like you're getting a top-class racing shoe. So you've got to really trust that the way it's been set up actually is going to be better for you over the course of a marathon. And I don't believe it will be for me or lots of other runners, actually. I think it's a stable shoe. It feels fine. It might be a solid daily trainer if you like a plated shoe with a decent rocker on it but it is not a top class racing shoe and you're paying a top class racing shoe price it reminded me a little bit of the Saucony Kinvara Pro which a lot of what I've just said also hold true for I think it's an expensive shoe with a plate that I just don't think really works like a super shoe but if you really liked the Kinvara Pro and found it like a really fun shoe and a good shoe to do a lot of training in and a stable shoe with a bit of plated action going on and actually the uh, Spectre might be a really nice shoe to pair with it as an actual racing shoe because it is a fair bit lighter than the Kinvara Pro but has a similar stable feeling with a little bit of punch and a little bit of a rocker but that's the only really buy case I can see here. I just don't think this is a shoe I'd recommend to lots of people to buy. I think if you're a slower marathon runner, or no, it's not even a slow marathon time, really, obviously, a four hour marathon. If you're a marathon around that time, I'd probably, and you're well worried about stability, I'd probably suggest looking at something like the Endorphin Pro 4 ahead of this. Or, and if that doesn't work for you, I'd probably just look at more general running shoes because this is a bit more stable but you're just not getting that level of propulsion you expect from a carbon plate shoe and it's you know it's really expensive so yeah a tough one to recommend so my verdict on the s lab spectre i've i've very much been happy running in this shoe in testing um i've not been out running in it thinking i wish i wasn't wearing the shoe uh, but what i have found is that i've never really picked up the shoe and thought this is going to be a great run um, ultimately it is a shoe that is sitting in that weird world of daily shoes that have plates in that um, are designed to be working alongside um, a super shoe um, but also give you a little bit more benefits when it comes to running a bit slower uh, and doing a lot more mileage in those shoes so it sort of sits in there for me which makes it a bit of a confusing shoe because obviously it's as expensive as a super shoe it is designed for people uh, who are aiming for a marathon time around four hours um, I, I, like Nick, don't uh, necessarily agree that you'd need that unless stability is a focal point for what you are doing. So if you really want uh, a lot of the um, technical features that you get in some super shoes, like the plate, um, then but you want to have stability in it as well, then that's, this shoe does deliver something along those lines. You're getting a bit more stability than what you're going to get in a lot of super shoes. Um, but if you don't need that stability, I don't think there's any benefits to wearing this shoe um, for a four hour marathon time over a lot of other shoes, whether that is a carbon plate super shoe like the Alpha Fly or the Vaporfly, or whether you're going to go for something like the Sockney Dorkin Speed 3, which it um, ideally does deliver the same sort of thing as this shoe. It can do daily miles, but you can also run fast and race in it as well. So I think if you were looking for that benefit, 
uh, you just want uh, an all-round shoe that can do lots of stuff and you can race in it i think the Saucony dolphin speed 3 is probably a better option and there's loads of other shoes out there that could do that as well things like the hocken mac x is a good example of a shoe that is very similar to this in fact probably even more similar to this than the Saucony dolphin speed 3 it's also a little bit more stable than what you're going to get in some super shoes so for me i think if i was going to pick up this shoe I'd be looking at those daily shoe options um, as cheaper, possibly better alternatives to this shoe. Um, but if you want, if you want a bit more stability, you're probably going to get it in this shoe. That's our review of the Salomon S Lab Spectre. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.